Welcome to our virtual graduation ceremony. One of the consequences of the current coronavirus outbreak is that we've not been able to host our normal summer graduation ceremonies at His Majesty's Theatre in Aberdeen. We did, however, want to provide an opportunity to mark this special milestone in your life at a time when it was still recent and exciting. So, thanks to the powers of digital technology, we are today hosting a virtual graduation ceremony. A benefit of this is that all graduating students and their families and friends can participate, irrespective of where in the world they currently reside. When circumstances allow, we do intend to hold an, a graduation event in Aberdeen at which you'll have the opportunity to attend in person. So, to today's graduating students, it is a great honour to congratulate you on your degree. This is a sentiment I know that will be shared by staff of the university and those close to you who, during the course of your studies, will have encouraged you, supported you and at times, no doubt, fallen out with you. As with all great achievements, you will have to overcome personal challenges along the way. But collectively, you've all faced an unprecedented challenge in, over the past six months as you continue to study in the midst of the COVID-19 outbreak. I'm immensely proud of how our staff and students have coped with this particular challenge. And in my opinion, this makes your achievement even more significant. As graduates of Robert Gordon University, you will have acquired a set of generic skills and attributes that will be invaluable to you in order to ensure that you thrive in a world that is now moving ever more rapidly and with greater uncertainty. These include the ability to be resilient, creative, entrepreneurial, and to think and act agilely. You can also go forward with confidence in that the university you're graduating from continues to go from strength to strength. In the past year, the university has retained its outstanding record for graduate employability, has been ranked best modern university in Scotland, has a, a won a national award for its approach to entrepreneurship and innovation, and just recently been ranked number two in the UK for student satisfaction in the National Student Survey. This is a truly outstanding achievement. We do hope that you'll remain connected with the university as you now move to the next phase of your life and careers. The university will always be here to support you as you join our global alumni community. And so, as today's ceremony proceeds, you will shortly each take to the digital stage. Before then, our student president will say a few words, followed by your head of school. The ceremony will conclude by a speech from our Chancellor, Sir Ian Wood. All that remains for me to do is to thank you for studying at RGU, again congratulate you on your award and wish you well for the future. Enjoy the ceremony and whatever celebration you may have planned at the end of the ceremony. Thank you. On behalf of all students, we congratulate the class of 2020. We'd like to thank the Chancellor, the Principal, the Board of Governors, Senior University Management and all members of staff who have contributed tremendously and adapted in the most audacious ways to deliver great service to the student's experience. And to you, our wonderful families and friends, for your tender loving support. You all are amazing. Today is indeed a remarkable day because it is a day where giants stand in their strides and conquer on every ground. And you, the class of 2020, are the best thing that has happened this year. It is true that these uncertain times have appeared unexpectedly and tried to undermine your achievements. But your resilience, your attitude, and the audacity to have hope in such a trying time is what every one of you would and should be remembered for. So dear class of 2020, it is an absolute honor to speak to you in this first ever virtual graduation. I understand the hurdles that you have had to jump, the sleepless nights, the tireless hours spent on coursework 
and exams while surviving a global pandemic. All that does not matter now. What matters is that you have made it and you are here. Although we have thanked many people today, it's important for yourselves to take a moment to look back with pride on what you've achieved and to realise that you've got to the end of this journey thanks to all your efforts that you have put in through the years that you've spent at RGU. I want to wish you all the best of luck in the future and please dream, dream big and remember that a smooth sea never made a skillful sailor. So no matter what challenges are thrown your way, remember to look back with pride on the challenges you've already tackled and always remember that you will have a home home here at RGU. Once again, congratulations to the class of 2020. Our graduation of 2020 denotes a remarkable achievement for the graduating students of Grace School of Art. Challenging enough to do this in what we might refer to as normal times, but to have your art school facilities, studios and workshops taken away from you, the challenge of producing your year's work became a whole different ballgame. In March, when we left our beloved Greys, the sadness felt by all of us was palpable. In the unknown of what was to come, both in terms of how the pandemic would develop and scar us as a society, was a very big question of how the school would continue to support its community of learners. The most important among those in our sites was our graduating students, and that was you. My personal tribute to you is that you helped us to teach you, to support you, and to do our level best to give you, in the absence of your physical degree show, a virtual one that indeed rivals many institutional gallery websites. I believe with your help, your determination and openness to consider another creative direction, we have done something outstanding, excellent and indeed groundbreaking. Without your fortitude, creative resilience and your ability to dig deep when needed, we would not have come through this with our heads held high. These lessons are indeed life lessons. We as staff of the school have learnt those lessons alongside you. Etienne Wenger, an educational theorist known for his ideas around communities of practice, spoke about a community that constructs knowledge together and in partnership. Working as a community, we have moved forward, sharing ideas, tools, strategies in our shared challenge and passion to bring our creative energies and vision in celebrating your much deserved success as a graduating cohort of 2020. You will remember the heartache of this year, but more so you will remember that you are a special year, a groundbreaking year, and a year that has triumphed through adversity and won. Chancellor, I present to you the graduates of Grace School of Art and ask that you confer the following awards of the university on them.
Happy graduation! Congratulations class of 2020, we made it! Happy graduation! everyone, this is Iona. Um, I'm really happy to be taking part in our graduation today. Um, I enjoyed my time at RGU a lot and also the time I spent abroad in Erasmus and I wish everyone the best in their futures. Hi class of 2020, I just wanted to give a huge congratulations to everybody graduating this year. I'm so proud of all of my classmates this year and I want to give a huge thank you to my friends and family for getting me through this degree.
I've had a great four years at Grey's and I'm so excited for when we're doing this in person with the actual gowns. Well done guys, we did it. Woo! Big shout out to my fam, especially mum and Keith and Alan, obviously, and Libby. You got it, hun.
First of all, many congratulations to all of you for successfully graduating in what has been a surreal and exceptionally difficult finish to your year. Although this graduation is certainly very different, please don't let it detract from the achievement of this proud and exciting Red Letter Day, which recognises the huge amount of work you've all done to get your degree. Many congratulations to you all. Although I can't see you, um, I know there are many, many proud mums and dads, families and friends out there celebrating your success, and quite rightly so. If I may, I'm going to send you off with some words of advice. First of all, can I tell you your generation is the most powerful in history with the transformational impact of digital technology and unbelievably fast-changing and powerful telecommunications. You are the digital revolution generation. What the geeks call 4.0, the fourth revolution era, with automation, artificial intelligence and robotics opening the door to opportunities right now we can't imagine. With computers that have analytical memory and capacity skills way ahead of us. And you're in a world that will continue changing at an alarming rate. First of all, huge population growth, possibly up to 10 billion people on our planet by 2100. And in the serious challenge of climate change with threats to our biodiversity and indeed to our ability to feed and look after our population. And we're not getting any better at working together with growing religious and racial strife and terrorism and major acts of violence, almost weekly events. You will live through huge discoveries in space investigation, and there's huge strides in medicine and science with people living longer, possibly much longer. And locally, locally we're in a major transformation from oil and gas to energy transition with the opportunity to establish our region as a major player in tackling the net zero challenge and the hope for net zero carbon by 2045. To be truthful, my generation hasn't really done much to solve the huge inequities across our planet. Almost one quarter of our world's population still live in abject poverty and life-threatening misery on less than a pound a day. About a billion people around the world suffer from serious hunger. 8,000 children die each day from malnutrition and 15,000 die each day from diseases we can easily cure. My generation's failure is not because we don't care. Most people do care, but generally we see the problem as too complex and somehow not really relevant to us. Somebody else needs to solve the world's problems. Your generation had the great opportunity of applying the whole range of new technologies to better look after our planet and its ecosystems and how well you treat the people a world away from you with nothing in common with you except they are fellow human beings. I have great hope for your generation. You have huge imagination, resilience and are more caring with a much better appreciation of the world's inequities. So let me finish by giving you some general advice. Firstly, in the midst of this incredible challenge of change, you must be constantly proactive to new approaches and ideas. Out of the blue, we've got the huge challenge of the COVID-19 pandemic, hopefully the biggest health challenge you will face in your lifetime, and it's still rampant. Just look at the new figures per day in countries like the USA, Brazil, Argentina, South Africa, Tanzania, and sadly, quite a few others. And of course, we have the transformational impact of digital technology. If continuous change and improvement are not at the forefront of your thinking, frankly, you're almost certainly going backwards. Complacency is a bad destination and the real danger to you not realizing your potential. Secondly, don't assume it's a fair world out there. Bill Gates speaks of 11 life unfairness rules, which should be compulsory reading for young people. Just one example, rule number 10, be nice to nerds. Chances are you'll end up working for one. So don't get indignant and lose the place when you come up against the world's many injustices, and there are many injustices in this world. Be pragmatic, plan and work your way through the real world as it is, warts and all. Don't waste your time recriminating on the what-ifs of the past. Concentrate on the what-ifs in the future 
as you walk away towards realizing your full potential. Thirdly, don't be a spectator. Most of the things that have gone wrong in our world have occurred because good people stood by and let them happen. The great explorer Ernest Shackleton defined optimism as moral courage. I urge you to be morally courageous, be a maker, be a doer, be a creator, but whatever, don't just sit back and criticize because that's far too easy and frankly, should be beneath you. As from today, you are no longer a spectator. You have graduated into the real world and are now endorsed and engaged as a player. There's a very wise saying inside an old person is a young person asking, what happened? What have I achieved? Don't be that person. Fourthly, don't be afraid to make mistakes and don't fear failure. I've certainly lost control of the number of mistakes I've made in my business career. The key thing is to recognize them quickly and rectify them. Don't ever hide from your mistakes. You'll just compound them. Some failure in life is inevitable, unless you live so cautiously that you might as well not, not have lived at all, in which case you fail by default. Fifthly, think global. Some of the biggest problems we currently face in our country, the economic financial challenges, COVID-19, the availability of energy, climate change, and the threat of terrorism, these are global problems, and they need global solutions. And Scotland, or whichever country you come from, is not the centre of the world. Our world has no centre. It's a matrix of countries and religions, ethnic groups and cultures. Sixthly, although global business is highly competitive, you absolutely don't need to compromise on your principles and ethics. Ethical business practice and corporate social responsibility is a key part of the Robert Gordon University learning. Don't ever in business sacrifice your self-respect or your integrity. Penultimately, when you've chosen, go for it. Don't ever underestimate your own potential. It's incredible what the human spirit can do if you really believe in yourself and set your sights high. Right now, you're focused on getting a good job and taking the next step in your life. But each of you should have a dream based on ambitious goals, well in excess of your reasonable expectations. Really challenge your aspiration. Don't let cannot dominate your vocabulary. I was Wood Group's first employee in the oil and gas industry in 1970. I set off with energy and zeal, but frankly, not at all sure where I was going and how I might get there. When I retired from Wood Group almost eight years ago now, it employed 43,000 people in 50 countries around the world. You can climb mountains and cross wide seas. And finally, in this very troubled world, be responsible, caring and tolerant. Our planet and its different inhabitants, whether God or science made, is truly an incredible miracle. If you're in any doubt, just watch the David Attenborough Blue Planet series or the Brian Cox Planet programs. The truth is we're unbelievably privileged to have time here. What is quite unforgivable is that our lack of tolerance of race and creed and our inability to balance wealth and well-being are abusing that privilege and possibly irretrievably damaging our ecosystem and our children's future. Different religions, races and cultures must be prepared to live together and to support each other in a gener generally more caring and tolerant society. And lastly, I'm going to tell you something you may not want to hear. In the context of the global world we live in, you are very privileged. Your intelligence, your talents, your capacity for hard work, the excellent education you've earned and received gives you unique status and unique responsibilities. To whom much is given, much is expected. And the way you live your lives, the values you adopt, the example you set, will have an impact way beyond your borders. With privilege comes responsibility, and I urge, I urge you to discharge it altruistically and caringly. So, if you choose to use your status and influence to raise your voice on behalf of those who don't have a voice, if you choose to identify not only with the powerful, but with the powerless, if you retain the ability to imagine yourself into the lives of those who do not have your advantages, 
then you could achieve great things with the power to change our world for the better. Once again, we are really sorry you haven't been able to enjoy a normal graduation experience, but don't underestimate the importance of this day in your lives and the opportunities now open to you. Please enjoy a very well-earned celebration with your family and friends. You are the future, and I wish you all the very best of luck. Thank you.